Stokers, what's up guys? How are you guys doing? Welcome to the Going Deep with Chad and JT podcast. Uh, I'm here with uh, JT. What's up, dudes? What's up, JT? Just chilling, man. Yeah? Yep. Nice. You want to get into it? Yeah, let's do it. Um, do you hear about this guy, Michael Rotondo, who was ordered to move out of his parents' house? He was living, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was living rent-free, and he refused to do chores, so they sued him, and a judge decided that he uh, he has to move out. Nice. Yeah, I saw a photo of him. He looked like a fucking weasel. <laughs> I would be so pissed if, like, my son... <laughs> like, you're not going to move out? I'm going to sue your ass. Is that him? I think so, yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Does he have a man bun? I think that's him being formal. Or just a ponytail. He's like, this is fucking bullshit. I think it nor- he probably normally wears it down, but he went ponytail for the court proceeding. Do you think if he had not gone with the magenta shirt, it would have swayed in his favor? Yeah, I mean, he looks like a used car salesman for sure. Yeah. They always do that when you're... um in trouble for something they find like the worst picture of you yeah especially if it's for um sexual improprieties yeah they always find a picture where like one of your eyes is like almost completely closed you probably had a few like gin and tonics and they're like and their mouth is open so it looks like they're like a mouth breather and they're just like yeah. Eh. Yeah. and then you see that photo you're like guilty yeah he did it <laughs> yeah you can't help it. They find the worst pictures of people. Like every photo of Harvey Weinstein. He's just like, <laughs> well, he dude, looks like that dude, constantly. Yeah, dude, why yeah. isn't your eye work? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he just looks like a creep. He looks like Jabba the Hutt. Yeah. And then um, I remember when uh, when Louis C.K. got in trouble and then his manager, Dave Becky, got in trouble for like um, kind of sweeping all the allegations under the rug for so long. They pulled up a picture of Dave Becky and I was like, and I've seen other photos. I'm like, that's not yeah. what he looks like. But the picture they put, he was like so sweaty and like his eyes yeah. were shut. And he just had this like evil glare in his eyes. Like, <laughs> and you're like, he did it. He covered it up. I yeah. know it. Dude, my car, I just want to bring this up. My car's all sticky. I don't, like the outside of my car is all sticky. I don't know what. Well, tell people what you think happened. I think someone jizzed all over it. Who do you think would jizz on your car? I don't know. Do you have any suspects? I've gone over my list of enemies. I just don't think they could produce that much jizz. Oh, it's sticky from like... It's everywhere. Like all over the car? Outside yeah. or inside? Outside. I'm like, did an elephant jizz all over my car? Right. It's a sticky situation. Someone would have seen that. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, even if someone did jizz on your car, you could do some DNA analysis... Oh, dude, quick tale. My buddy, uh, Robert, was dating this girl. Um, I think her name was Chanel, and she um, was kind of rude. And I one time, like, I went to the beach, and he and Robert was there. I was like, hey, where's Chanel? He's like, oh, she had work. She couldn't make it mm-hmm. to hang out today. And then she came walking down the beach with another guy, and, like, he tried to play it off, but we were all like, dude, she's, like, clearly two-timing you. Yeah. But that doesn't explain why I did what I did. But what I did was she came over to my friend Mike's house, and she, um, and when she was inside, me and another buddy stole her car. We drove down the street. We went into someone's backyard that had big dogs. We took a bunch of dog shit and put them in a newspaper bag. Mm-hmm. And then we sat in the car and held the shit by the heater for like 20 minutes, like yeah. sweating, yeah. And just making it smell yeah. like shit. And she called. She's like, where the fuck are you? I was like, we went to in and out We'll be right back. She was like, fine. And then we, uh, we put this shit under the car seat. Yeah. And then we drove back and we gave her the car and her and all of her, she had like five friends and they're all waiting in the driveway and they were like, they were so mad. They were like staring at us and we got out of the car. We're like, sorry, sorry. We just went and got some in and out. Yeah. And then they all got in the car and they like whipped around. And then as they were whipping around, one of the girls rolled down the window and went, and it smells like shit in here. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it does. And then, um, like four days later, I get a message from Robert. He's like, Hey dude, it's, um, Robert, um, Chanel's dad found the shit that you guys put in her car. (laughs) She ended up being super nice to me every time I saw her after that. She was always like, hey, dude, what's up? And like, gave me a big hug and stuff. And I was always like, I was like, but I put shit in your car. And I think she subconsciously, she was probably afraid that if she was mean to me, 
she'd always get shit in her car. Yeah. Dude, we had a in college we had a big poo bag phase. Like lighting poo bags on people's doorsteps on fire. Just from like just with like rival dudes. Yeah, you know? yeah. And then our friend Joey who he lived in a shed. I've spoken of him before. Sorry, Joey. We really took it to you those four years. But uh <laughs> dude, we like uh one time we were in front of Joey's shed and we put his shit bag in front and lit not lit it on fire and we were just dousing it with Lighter fluid and the flame got like three feet in the air. Yeah, it's sca- it's dangerous to play with fire. Yeah, we put a lot of poo bags. We we played with a lot of poo bags that year. I used to TP people during the day. Yeah, and then people would catch me. And they'd be like, "What are you doing?" I go, "I'm cleaning up." <laughs> oh, you might just keep going. No, I would keep going, but they would think I was cleaning up from the night before. <laughs> you just throw the shit. I'd be throwing it. And they'd be like, what are you doing here? Are you TPing this person? But it was like four in the afternoon. <laughs> so like no one TPs during the day. Yeah. And then they'd be like, what are you doing? Are you? I think someone gave it to us. Like someone was like, what are you guys doing? Are you guys cleaning? And we were like, yeah, yeah we're cleaning. I had my like 25-year-old Colombian cousin. I was like 14 at the time. My 25-year-old Colombian cousin who was living with us, I was like, hey, can you drive my buddies and I around? We're going to go TP. Yeah. And he was like, I'm in. <laughs> Dude, I, one time we got a poo bag. Um, it was like, a, and we got like a grocery bag, big poo bag, laid on fire, put it in the middle of the street. This was in college. And, um, the cars start coming and this like Camaro comes, just <laughs> drives right through oh. it, hits it. And then we hear these, like a block away, these start these tires just go, <laughs> like he just stopped <laughs> and slammed the door <laughs> to assess the damage. Oh, really? Yeah. Dude, speaking of all this like bullying stuff, I've been watching the TV show Cobra Kai, mm-hmm. the update of uh, the Karate Kid. It is everything entertainment should be. There's not a single misstep in it. I'm only six episodes in, six out of ten, but I love it so much. I cannot recommend it enough to the Stokers. Cobra Kai on YouTube Red. Watch the original Karate Kid and then watch this. It's so good. Do you have to pay for it? Yeah, I think it's eight bucks a month. It's not horrible. Eight yeah. bucks a month? You can use my password. I'll, I'll give it to you when we're... Uh, YouTube Red. How is YouTube Red doing? I think this is their first hit from what I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. They've been taking a lot of swings, though. I mean, they have to yeah. have like considerable money. Well, they, yeah. they swung with Logan Paul. Oh, they did. Yeah, he was he was like on their sponsored he, content. He was on yeah he was on like some like high school show. I, I think it's still on actually. Oh, re- oh, so he was an actor, actor. Yeah, he wasn't just doing like vlogs and stuff like no, that. No, no, no. He was like in one of their shows. Yeah, well, I'm gonna kickbox him at some point. Yeah, he was playing like the high school jock. Just like, you trying to bone my sister? What? <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Except I could just see him being like, yeah, bone my sister. Yeah, he doesn't care about his sister. Um, I, uh, I was on Instagram and I saw this chive post of this like military dog getting like walked to like, goes everyone was saluting him cause he was like fighting cancer and, uh, they were like walking him to like put him to sleep and all these dudes were like saluting him and I was oh, like, that's amazing. That's beautiful. Yeah. Man, that's so cool. Yeah. That dog's a soldier. Mm-hmm. I wonder what that dog's like if you're in the dog's brain. Like, see, like, I'm like the best dog. I don't think he has any idea. For He's sure. He's like, oh, what's up, dudes? Where are we going? <laughs> like, why is everybody saluting me? Yeah. They're like, you're about to die. He's like, what's death? <laughs> yeah. We're going to put you to sleep. Sweet. Yeah, good. I'll see you guys when I wake up. Later, dudes. Later, are dudes. there any bombs here? Yeah. Yeah, he's just, dogs have a one-track mind. There's like, food? No food? Are we looking for bombs? No bombs? Yeah, I guess I'm chilling then. Later, guys. Later, dudes. Why is everyone so sad? There's a new roller coaster that's the biggest in the state. Did you hear about this? Chad's a roller coaster fanatic. Where? Let me look it up. Is that Knott's Berry Farm? No, I don't think so. Oh, it's Six Flags. A new one? Yeah. And, dude, Disneyland's doing a lot of new stuff. There's a new Tomorrowland roller coaster. What? Yeah, and they're going to open a Star Wars. uh, Yeah, I saw Star Wars Land. I'm stoked for that. But there is a new Hangtime roller coaster at Knott's, too. So you knew about that? Yeah, I just saw a commercial. Six Flags Great America. The Uh, Mardi Gras Hangover. Where's Great America? I have no idea. Is it in New Orleans since it's called the Mardi Gras? 
Now, dude, the Six Flags in uh, New Orleans is uh, it's uh, abandoned. Dude, you're a beast. I just see it every time I go to New Orleans. Oh, it's in Illinois. What's your favorite roller coaster? The one that we did, the uh X two? Yeah. Uh definitely one of my faves. Yeah, yeah probably X two. X two is wild. It's too wild. I know, you were you were kind of a a little Sally on that one. I was not a Sally. Dude, you were a Sally. I strapped in and took it with everything I had. <laughs> You're in line, just all quiet. I'm like, you okay, dude? Yeah, I'm good. That's, right. that's not a Sally. That's it like is a Sally. No, that's like a... You gotta, you that's gotta, like a, you gotta be amped on the thrills, all right? Dude, I was just focused and locked in. <laughs> remember, all right, call it what you want, dude. Remember my face? I was like... <laughs> Oh, dude, stop, stop. I was like, <laughs> um, All right, let's get into it. Who's your, uh, who's your, uh, let's start with uh, Babe of the Week. Who's your Babe of the Week? All right, this one's a tricky one. So my Babe of the Week is this mystery personal trainer at the gym I go to. Oh. She is just like a fire on fire, <laughs> like this blonde she's blonde mega babe in excellent shape um i haven't taken one of her sessions um but I, from from a distance it looks like she's really hands on and like really cares about her clients which is really dank um and uh so I, like the thing about it is like i can't say that much about her you know because she's kind of like this mystery lady to me that i look at from afar and like you know, for the past like four months, I've been wanting to, you know, say what up and just be like, hey, how can I work my triceps a little bit more or something like that? But um, she has, she's just like, uh, she's there. But I just, to be honest, dude, I'm scared to go up to her. You know, one, I'm at the gym, so I'm all sweaty. Two, I, I think she gets probably, she looks like hard to approach. And also, it's at the gym. Have you ever approached a lady at the gym? No, but I know what you mean by the hard to approach thing. Does she have kind of like a steely like uh, surface where it's like she's very like in command of what she's doing and not to be bothered? Yeah, and also kind of like it's sort of like if you do bother her, she's just like, "What are you doing?" You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so Stokers, maybe you could write in and like help me out and just give me like some tips on how I can approach this beautiful babe at the gym. I got um, one. What's up, dude? Just fucking lift so hard that she can't resist. That's what I've been trying to do, you know. I got one of those uh, Hungarian bags, Bulgarian bags, and she was like, and I was just swinging it around in front of her, you know, hoping. And she looked a couple times, not going to lie. but um, It's like a mating dance. Yeah, but I didn't really know where to go after that. I mean, I think you just go to the next lift. If you're doing Bulgarian bags, and a good thing to do after that is just like body weight exercises. Yeah. If you bang out 50 dips in front of her, yeah, something's going to happen. The thing is, she's always with, like, a client, you know? So it's, like, she's, like, helping out some, like, lady, and I just go, like, what up? Like, you want to get, like, Applebee's or something? She'd be, like, um, I'm trying to help this girl work her hamstrings. And you're, like, for sure. All right. Oh, I'll talk to you never. Well, then, my dog, um, presupposing you have the funds available, I would sign up for a session. Yeah. It's a little bit duplicitous because you're – plans are not necessarily to just get jacked although that's a happy byproduct your plans are actually to get to know her yeah but my dad calls that cheating not like actual cheating on a partner but he's just like you're cheating like you're not playing the game by the by the it's like it's like a most cheap, fair cheap rules. way to yeah it's like if yeah. you try to date like a realtor by like renting an apartment from her yeah that's what my dad did that's why we talked about it yeah um but yeah, I would just do a session with her. And then, I mean, dude, even if nothing happens, maybe you learn some new tricks to tweak your biceps or something. So it's still a, a happy ending. Yeah. I like that. Thing is, yeah. And there is, like, I, I do have, I think I pulled my groin 
and she does give massages, but oh, I've <laughs> no, heard no, this no, trick before. No, 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 no. That's wow. Right. We're reaching, dude. We're why? Are, reaching, why is your head dude. already going there, Par? <laughs> oh yeah. Why? Why, why, why is my head going? Why there? Why don't you let me finish the when fucking? When my dog's <laughs> like, dude, I think I ripped my dough, and I need someone <laughs> to give me a hand job. No, dude. Yeah. But, but for real, all right. <laughs> yeah. I, but I'll do. I'll like stretch, and it'll like feel fine. Then I'll do sprints again, and it hurts again. I'm with you, dude. One hundred percent. And I can't just go up to her and be like. Like, look, I know she do massages. My groin is just fucking whack. Like, yeah, I think she know. might be a bit suspicious. Yeah. But at the same time, but the thing is, I'm being honest. Yeah, but that's like being like, <laughs> that's like being like, oh, like my mouth is chapped. Can you give me some kisses to moisten my lips? Like, does that make sense? Yeah, I do that all the time. Fair enough. Why? Why does your head keep going down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, maybe just sign up for a session with her. She does live on my block, though. You know, because I walk to the gym. I see. I've. I've. My roommate said that he's seen her a couple times walk down the block. So maybe I should just walk the block a little bit more and just <laughs> like waiting. Yeah, I think uh, that's a bad <laughs> idea too. I would. <laughs> I would just. I would so just, no waiting on the block. No, I would not wait on the. I know. I get that though. I mean, but but maybe walk I'm picturing it. you doing like a bad version of it, like where you're just like sitting there, and then she comes up, you're like, oh hey, like yeah, you you could probably time it and like block yourself so she doesn't see you, so it looks organic, but. Yeah. That all seems like uh, I could be waiting there too, all day. And too much could go wrong. Yeah, I would just uh, I would just do a session with her. Yeah. What if I go up for like um, they're like, like hey, can I sign up for a session? They're like, yeah. Who do you want? They're like, yeah, we'll set you up with Rick. I'm like, no, I don't want to go with Rick. I want to go with. They're like, well, who do you want to go with? I'm like that the hot blonde. <laughs> they're like, uh, okay. Well, uh. A good thing to do that way is to, um, the way I've met my trainers that I've worked out with, and they were all dudes, though. Oh, except for one, Joanna was a girl, um, but we weren't, like, uh, sexually attracted to each other. Uh, I think you just go up to her uh-huh. and be like, hey, like, do a lift that you've seen her teaching people yeah. that's pretty specific, you know, like, something that she teaches that's unique. Go up to her and be like, hey, like, I saw you teaching someone how to do, like, one leg like pike squats like could you help me out i think like my yeah. hips aren't like directionally correct and she'll be like oh yeah sure da 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 and then if she would be like whoa wow i really felt that I'm like hey i've been thinking about doing like a training session would you be available for like a consultation like uh yeah. next tuesday night yeah. around eight o'clock at uh taroni's italian and then she's like i don't train there and you go oh really have- well maybe we'll just get dinner yeah that's a good line they have great bolognese yeah. You know, we're meant to be, so I'll find a way. All right. My babe of the week. <laughs> Who's your babe of the week? My babe of the week is uh, a little, not so little fella named Aaron Donald, defensive tackle for the Los Angeles Rams. Probably the best disruptor on defense in the league right now since JJ went out with the bad back. I mean, you could say it's Von Miller. But I'm going Aaron Donald. I just think when you get that kind of pressure from the interior, there's not a lot of people who can do that. It's difficult to duplicate, and it's even harder to account for. The thing I like about Aaron Donald, too, is that he's only 6'1", so he's a bit undersized for the position, and he's only 280, which is also probably on the low end of the spectrum for most defensive tackles. So I like that he's small and a spark plug and that he's got a motor. You know, a lot of things that seem more like... um, intangibles rather than like god-given gifts um but one thing that i i was just blown away by is i was on uh the internet the other day and i saw a photo of him shirtless and the dude is cut he is so freaking cut at 61280 do you know how many people are cut at 61280 probably one aaron donald the guy's got abs shredded deltoids and just a good overall uh, symmetry and physical composition and I just think that's fucking sick dude I think it's fucking cool that he's so fucking ripped and he's so good at football he's not uh, reporting right now to uh, optional uh, training sessions with the Rams because I think he's waiting for that new fat contract and I know all of his teammates are pulling for it because they know that he's not just a beast on the field but he's also a leader in the locker room I'm actually not sure about that but I'm pretty sure so Aaron Donald you're my babe of the week babe wow dude <laughs> fuck Aaron <laughs> Donald and I've just been uh, thinking about ways that I could uh, 
um, Bone Aaron Donald, but mm-hmm. I just don't. I, you know, I want to go up to him, like, dude. Hey, I love that you had like sixty-two QB pressures last year, and um, I'd also uh, love if you'd uh, put some pressure on my butthole, that fat dong of yours, partner. I like that approach. I think that's a little bit aggressive, but I think just play it cool, dude. You know, you're right. You're right. Just play it cool. Just be like, he'd be like, hey, you're a pretty cool guy, Par, and you'd be like, yeah, I can hang out next month. He'll be like, whoa, this guy's on a mission. Yeah. He'll increase the attraction. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And then he'll bone you. <sighs> Jabwow. Can I bring up Jabwow? I forgot to bring yeah, up yeah. Jabwow. Let's, yeah, let's do some more news stuff. So, dude, other breaking news. You invented a word. It's been in heavy circulation, uh, and it was used in during s- a surf competition <laughs> yeah. by Chris Cope. Chris Cote. Chris Cote. Uh, yeah. Jabwow, dude. Uh Hopefully, hopefully it just keeps permeating the ether, and hopefully we get some, uh, you know, celebs to start saying it. And then, Urban Dictionary has not confirmed it yet. Well, I'm sure they're going to be getting a lot of pressure from the Jabwow uh, community and, yeah. and enthusiasts. The Stokers keep submitting Jabwow. Let's get it in there. So Jabwowers keep getting stoked on the Jabwow. Jabwow Nation. The thing I like about it, not to toot my own dong. Um, is that you can use it in so many different ways. You know, you could be like, hey, Jabwow, or you could, it's it's a greeting, or, you, you know, Chris Cote used it as like, uh, Kolohe and Dino almost got Jabwowed by the lip. You know, there's so many uses for yeah. it. Yeah. So, um, it's fucking Jabwow. That's pretty amazing. Who's your, uh, who's your beef of the week? You know, I don't want to say it's with particular members of my fraternity, but, I'd say it's, I'll I'll just go with a general group. Because when I was a pledge, there was an overall, you know, when I was a pledge, very early on in my pledge ship, my Achilles heel was revealed. And, well, basically, I just told them, I was like, I was like, look, guys, you can do anything to me, you know? You can tie me to a tree, you can shove something at my ass, you can make me do the elephant walk, you can make me eat gefilte fish that's been in out for days you can make me chug any kind of warm 40 you can make me you know flash dong in the quad you can make me do whatever just don't cut my hair that was my hard line i'm like you cut my hair i'm out of this frat and i'm gonna go find other bros to kick it with and i thought and um saying that i knew that i had crossed the line um Because uh, then every you have like interviews to like get in the fraternity, you know. So like your interview is like a, a bro will be like, "Here's what you're gonna do," you know. And he's like, "You're gonna chug this forty, and then you pass the interview." So you have to pass the interview with each bro, right? And um, so every interview they'd blindfold me, not everyone, but like almost everyone they'd blindfold me, and then they'd put on hair trimmers and they'd like turn them on. So you, would, I would just hear them in the background, and like you know. There's just certain lines you do not cross. And when you threaten a man's livelihood like that continually, even if it's a joke, like that is the one joke you cannot make. And so my beef of the week is with you, fraternity bros, for threatening my livelihood, threatening my ability to be me, you know? Because if you had cut my hair, I would have not only not been a part of the fraternity, I would have also probably gone on a rampage and beat all your asses even though i'm kind of a smaller dude i would have the rage would have flowed through me because you do not cut my hair so my beef of the week is with you guys for you know trying to go for my achilles heel you know why don't you toughen me up in different ways you know make me chug make me hold dong make me do other things just don't threaten my hair that's my beef If they touched your hair, I, I'd freak out. I'd be like, why are you taking away one of his, you know, amongst several, but why are you taking away one of his best attributes? I know. It's, what kind of brotherhood is this when we're trying to weaken men where they're strongest? Exactly. It's like, you want me to be a part of the fraternity, but you're going to take away what makes me special? Yeah. Why don't you make me stronger instead of just trying to scare me? You know, that just shows, I think, just character, you know, the true character. It's like, 
So I, I knew who the weak ones were. It's like, oh, you're going to threaten my hair? And then other guys would be like, let's chug. And I'm like, okay, you are actually trying to make me a quality gentleman. Hey, look at Eric. He's 6'9". Let's cut yeah. off his feet. Yeah. It's basically what they were saying. So that's my beef. My beef of the week is with a Chewy. Chewy was uh, my bully in second grade. We'd play basketball every day together during uh, recess, and um, he would foul me incessantly, hard, and uh, he would call me names. He'd call me maggot. I didn't know what a maggot was at the time, and neither did my parents. They were like, I, I would come home to my parents, I'd be like, this kid Chewy's bullying me. He's like shoving me and hitting me, and he's calling me names. They're like, what names is he calling you? I'm like, he's calling me maggot. They were like, what's a maggot? I was like, I don't know. And so... uh it got to a breaking point where I was coming home crying every day. So I asked my parents, I'm like, what should I do? And my dad said, uh, John Thomas, you have to hit this kid. And I said, dad, are you sure? And he said, yeah, punch him. So I went back to school and I was still a little bit uncertain about hitting Chewy. So I went up to the yard duties who were like the, uh, not teachers, but the people who watched us when we were at recess. And I said, I was like, Hey, uh, I have to forget what her name was. I think it was Lori. I was like, Hey, Lori. Chewie's been bullying me. My dad said I should punch him. What do you think I should do? And she was like, don't tell anybody I told you this, but punch him. And I was like, all right, I got green lights from the adults. Let's go play some basketball. So I'm shooting some basketball. I'm basically already crying because I know I'm going to punch him today. Mm -hmm. So I'm just dribbling the ball. Then I dribble down. And then he fouls me like he always does. But um, by the standards of fouls he normally gave me, this one was like very minimal. So he had no idea what was coming. So he fouled me. I break into full tears. I run up. I sock him in the face. Chewy starts crying. I just stand there looking at him crying. He socks me back in the face. We're both crying. We're staring at each other. And then we both at the same time basically go, let's go tell the yard duties what we did. So we start walking to tell the yard duties that we punched each other in the face. I decide on our walk over to the yard duties that... um. Chewy hasn't suffered enough for what he's done to me for the entire school year. So I go, Chewy, keep walking up ahead. I'm going to tie my shoes. I go down to my shoes. Chewy didn't bother to check. I don't even have shoelaces. I'm wearing Velcros. I strap the Velcros. I then run up behind Chewy, and with an open palm, I swing and strike him on the back of the neck, which is like a kill shot. I mean, not when a second grader does it, but in any movie with Chuck Norris, that's how you murder someone. Yeah. Chewy, probably not even out of pain, but just out of truly being betrayed for the first time as a human being, drops to the ground, curls into a ball, and starts crying. These girls come running up, and they go, you're a monster! You're a monster! To me. And they start helping Chewy. And I, I felt, I was like, you ladies don't even know what he's done. And I walked off defiantly, like, yes, I rectified an evil, and I am right in the way I dispense justice. Yard duties see Chewy crying on the ground. They ask him what happened. They come and grab me. They bring us both into the office. At this point, I hadn't turned into the enfant terrible that I would become later in life. So I got doled out a much lesser punishment than Chewy because he was punching a lot of kids on the yard. But Chewy and I ended up becoming homies after that. And a couple months, maybe even a year later, we were doing a food fair at school. And there was this one kid just literally bullying people on the... Uh, at the uh, playground and uh and i said hey quit bullying people dickweed my mom was watching this whole thing and then he's like fuck you bitch and then i went fuck you and i ran and we started fighting and he was actually winning he was like a real evil sick fuck like he was like digging his nails into me and like swinging his feet and just being all sorts like i was doing like karate i was like trying to fight with some honor and he was just like ripping and clawing at me and he's on top of me and he's just like putting dirt in my face and like scraping my face i'm like oh you sick freak i'm like this kid's a good bully who comes and tackles him chewy and then chewy and i went to work on this kid I think the kid still ended up getting the best of us, but we survived. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my mom was like, good job, John Thomas. You stood up for people. That was good of you. And I was like, yeah, now my face is all jacked up. She's like, yeah, that hurts, huh? And I was like, it does hurt. She was like, okay. So Chewie's a hero. Yeah, Chewie ended up being a good guy. He just had a, probably had some older brothers who were uh, hard on him. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, shit flows downhill. So he was taking out on us on the basketball court. Yeah. 
It's an inspiring story. Thank you, dude. I, I like how um, the wisdom that adults have shown in these instances. Oh, like, yeah. Dude, fight his ass. Yeah. Yeah, literally the yard duties who like worked there every day and were there to protect the kids. I was like, what should I do? And one of them, Lori was like from like a really rough part of Chicago. She was like, you got to fuck them up, JT. And I was like, on it. And then the next day I was like, hey, I punched him. She's like, you did the right thing. And then we talked about basketball. We both love basketball. I, can I do my legend of the week first? Because yours is going to be so controversial. Mm-hmm. Guys, my legend of the week is Obadiah Khan. Genghis Khan's son. Now, Genghis Khan was the greatest conqueror the world has ever known. I think he conquered like two-thirds of the known world at the time using uh, just a ruthless and well-trained army of steep soldiers. They would ride on their horses and they would just mow through city after state after town, and they dominated. Genghis Khan, he dies, and then this is where things get interesting, because it's easy it's easy to inherit the empire. It's harder to maintain it. So Obadiah Khan was his son, who's supposed to be a really smart dude. And the thing that I liked about Obadiah was that he was funny. And I'll, by the way, this is all stolen from hardcore history, so if you guys are interested, I would listen to hardcore history uh, specifically the Wrath of the Khan episodes where I've stolen all this information from. I have no other sources. Is that a podcast? Yeah, with Dan Carlin. It's so good. Um, Obadiah was an alcoholic, and so he was a good ruler, but his drinking was getting to be a problem. So his uh, commanders were like, Obadiah, you're only allowed to have one glass of wine a day. And he says, all right, commanders, I agree. And so he had his blacksmith make him a cup this big, my hands are about three feet wide, and that's what he would drink every day. And he was like, it's one cup. <laughs> they were like, that's not a cup. That's like a cauldron. He's like, it's a cup. <laughs> and he ended up, uh, and then he ended up getting sick, and the commanders were so worried that they wouldn't be able to, you know, manage the empire without him because it was so it was spread thin at this point, and, you know, people were getting promoted who probably didn't deserve to be promoted, and, you know, other people, other clans of people were advancing militarily, and they were ready to fight back, and so they were really afraid to lose Obadiah. So they had a shaman come in, and he was looking over Obadiah's unconscious body, and he's like, Obadiah, we promise to the gods that if you come back... Uh, no, he, he said, gods, please bring Obadiah back, and as sacrifice... We will kill someone from the Khan clan. And like a minute after that, Obadiah wakes up. And they, so they go to Obadiah. They go, Obadiah, hey, you came back because we promised the gods that we would sacrifice someone from your family. And then the first thing Obadiah said was, who's here? <laughs> but I just like that Obadiah, you know, was able to maintain the empire that Genghis built and that he... Uh, you know, was able to overcome some of his deficiencies as a person. And I also just really think the name Obadiah is sick. So my legend of the week is you, Obadiah Khan. Who's here? What a savage. I wish I could have kicked it with Obadiah. Yeah, he sounds like a beast. Yeah, they said Genghis too, like when uh, like reporters at the time, whatever you'd call them, historians or like other people who took notes of what they saw were with him that all the other guys would be like partying hard and Genghis would just be in the corner kind of chilling, like more low key, mm-hmm. just sipping on his drink, but not, not being ostentatious mm-hmm. about his station. And yeah. I think that's a, a big part about why they were so successful as, as murderers. Epic. Oh, my legend of the week is the legend himself, Tom Cruise. Now I'd like to take a quote from JT and say that his, one thing about Tom Cruise is his charisma is so high octane. That's a JT quote. And, you know, in every movie, that he's just he just dominates every movie. And he's just a fucking beast all around, you know? I, th- I, th- I want to go ahead and say he's one of the greatest movie stars of all time. He's dominated cinema for, what, like 35 years? Something like that with all his movies. Maybe you can help me out with the history since you're more of a film buff. Um, but uh, he just, uh, I'm just always in awe of his, you know, and a lot of critics have come down on him for his Scientology ways. And to that, I say, shut up and enjoy the fucking show, you know, because um, he's a beast. And also, another quote from JT is that on movie sets, he'll remember everyone's name, he'll know the whole script line for line. And he'll know the names of the crew members' parents, which 
that's going above and beyond. So this guy, apparently he's just, you know, one of the nicest guys in Hollywood. He'll know everyone's name. He'll He's one of those guys where if you see, if you knew him 20 years ago and you haven't seen him since, and then you see him like today, once you see him, he'll be like, oh, what's up, Jimmy? How's the family? How, how are your parents, Rob and Kim? And you're like, wow, you really are on top of your game. And he's like, yeah, I'm fucking Tom Cruise. You know, so um, I just want to make Tom Cruise my legend of the week, dude. Your smile is so infectious. Every time I see you in a movie, it just fills me up with so much stoke. I can't handle it. It's just like fucking jabwow. You do action. You do your own stunts. You're a tremendous actor. You can do drama. You can do comedy. And one of my favorite roles of Tom Cruise is uh, his role in uh, Tropic Thunder, where he plays, uh, what's the guy's name? Less moon blasts? Less something like that. And I think that just shows his uh, comedic chops. Um, you know, like Paul Thomas Anderson said that he's his, his favorite, you know, um, which is huge. And um, he can do it all. So I just want to commend you, Tom Cruise. And, you know, there's controversy surrounding you, but I ignore that because I think you're a legend. You're my favorite movie star. You're a beast. Keep doing your thing. I will always be rooting for you. He's the best. He's one of my favorite actors of all time. Yeah. I think he's so dynamic on screen. He's yeah. so committed to everything he's doing. Yeah. What? So what are your what are your favorite Tom Cruise performances? Les Grossman's the name in Tropic Thunder. Les, uh, Les Grossman, the Mission Impossible series. Um, I like Risky Business, Cocktail. Yeah, I like them all. Vanilla Sky was dank. Wow, Vanilla Sky. Yeah. Vanilla Sky, and also his hair, dude. I totally like when he had that long hair. Uh, like Mission Impossible Two, like get the fuck out of here, dude. You can't really beat that. It looks good. Yeah, he's... and he got braces after that movie. Oh, really? He's so inspiring in so many ways. Good hair, good looks, good dynamic acting, good comedic chops. What else do you need? He can do it all. Solid memory. Um, there's another movie. Um, A Few Good Men. Oh man, so good one, Cappy. Yeah, Jerry Maguire. Yeah. Anything am I missing? I think that was his peak uh, period as an actor. Yeah. Anything Anything of note for you? Uh, of his films that I really love. I mean, I liked his most recent movie, American Made. I thought that Dude, was that really was cool. Yeah, He's yeah. a little bit old for the part, but if anyone can do it, it's him. Um, what else? I mean, I love him in Magnolia. I love him in uh, all the Mission Impossible. What's your favorite Mission Impossible? I think two. Oh, interesting. The John yeah. Woo one. Yeah. yeah. Where there's a lot of like the gung fu, maybe, the gung fu stuff. I think a lot of that is just nostalgia because I saw it as a kid and I was just so amped when I uh, saw it. It's a wild fucking movie. That motorcycle scene? Can't really beat that. He does get his ass kicked. The thing about the Mission Impossible movies is like he just is continually getting getting beaten down. Yeah, like thrown into things. Yeah. Oh, Collateral's really good. Oh, Collateral's great. The Michael Mann movie. Eyes Wide Shut is very good. Minority Report. Minority. Dude, there's so many good ones. The Last Samurai. I oh, love, I love that Last movie. Samurai. Yeah, yeah. Very good movie. Tell me how he died. No. I will tell you how he lived. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Dude, the, the, the romance that ensues between him and I don't even know her name. The lady. It's very chaste. Like, there's yeah. not much, like, uh, physical intimacy. Just like Tom's, his stare. Where he's just like, he gives her the look. Oh, you're going to watch me bathe? Nice. I mean, we, we haven't talked about Top Gun yet. Fuck. <laughs> There's so many movies. That's the thing. Is like I know we're going to listen back to this and be like, Tom, we did you a disservice. I know. But it's like... When he's, I was going been, through it, I'm like, I, I feel like I'm doing that right now. No, not at all. I mean, he's been doing hits for 35 years. You can't cover it. It's yeah. a podcast onto itself. Yeah. I listened to his Nerdist podcast. Oh, he was on that? Yeah, he was great. Did Hardwick ask the tough questions about uh, Scientology? No. Yeah, I'm JK. He, <laughs> yeah, he, uh, and the thing is, too, he's he loves his craft so much. He's like, he watches a movie a day and he just loves everything about storytelling. I mean, I think that's one of the things I love about him most. And I'm, it's something that I think I always tell you, you're Tom Cruise. It's one of the things you guys share is the discipline. Oh, thank you. He's a very disciplined person. Yeah. Which I, I respect. Do you watch the video highlight of him recently breaking his leg, like jumping building to building? I saw the. I haven't seen that video highlight, but I've seen the, I've seen that stunt. Right, right. Where he hurt, hurt himself. Yeah, he's and he still finishes. Like he crawls yeah. up and and like, 
yeah. you know, does what he's supposed to do in the scene. Yeah. Dude, he does everything. He like when when Ducati has new motorcycles, they give him the motorcycles to test them. <laughs> I am surprised that he rides motorcycles. You know, because like, you know, it, if he falls, if he falls, his reflex times are like. I know. I sh- I'm sorry. I doubted you, Tom. Fuck. I should go do push-ups just because I just doubted you. Fuck me. Um. Tom Cruise, if you're listening to this, which I'm sure you are. <laughs> Please, can we hang out? I think he listens to podcasts on like four fast, though. You know how you can <laughs> yeah. speed up listening to a podcast? You know, he cranks it up to like eight. He's done with it in like 15 seconds, well, what if but we, remembers, uh, remembers everything. What if we saw him? He's like, what if we saw him? He, and he's like, oh, Chad and JT, what's up? Going deep. Episode four, when you guys talk about Logan Paul. Had me dying. Yeah, <laughs> like, minute 17, second 32. Yeah. Very funny. I noticed that transition point at 18. Yeah. Who did that? You're like, who the fuck are you, dude? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I was. Uh, I sent gifts, gifs or whatever of Tom Cruise. Are we um, sending those to a lot of people? I sent it to like, my whole f- contact list because I was so amped on it. There's, there's a gif out there, guys, of Tom Cruise when he's rock climbing in Mission Impossible 2, and he's hanging on like his both arms are spread wide. And you see his flow come into his face, and then he gives like a big breath, and then he like opens his eyes. I sent that to like everyone in my contact list last night, and uh, not as many people responded as I thought should have. I was expecting that's shocking. I was expecting because I sent another one to a Vin Rames. He that's who it is. Yeah, right? yeah. A Vin Rames saying, <laughs> "Typical Ethan." Yeah. So I sent those two, and I should have gotten a hundred percent response rate, probably like fifty. So, the people who didn't, you're out of my life later. All right, guys, this podcast is brought to you by one of our sponsors, Helix Beer Bongs, the best in the game when it comes to good flow of brewski through your tubes. Guys, you like to party. You like to chill. You like to kick it. You like to funnel brewskis into your gullet, and they can go in your stomach and make you drunk as fuck. That's why Helix Beer Bongs is here with their new patented valve technology which they use this thing it's like a in miller light where they have like the grooves and the bottles they implemented that into their beer bongs so you get full flow of beer it, there's no air in there so when that beer goes down into your belly it's all brewski there's no air so you don't have to like burp it back up which is always painful maximum flow excellent valves excellent tubes i believe they're imported from Magnol, no, they're imported from France, and the funnels are imported from Italy. They're marble. Yeah. So, guys, next time you party, choose Helix beer bongs. That was excellent copy. Helix, thank you, dudes. I've been hitting your beer bongs uh, daily, even sometimes without beer, just putting whatever fluids I got through them. It's good shit, man. All right, Stokers, let's get into some questions. What up? I've been a loyal listener since the very first episode, and I think you guys really shed light on a lot of issues and give a path towards self-help. I come to you with a serious dilemma. I was talking with this babe for a couple months, and she is a total smoke show. She's from England, and that accent really gets me going. She called things off because she was still attached to her ex, who's a total deadbeat. I've since tried to move on and started courting a girl that is going to vet school and has a pretty killer rig. She's great and we vibe. She even likes Froyo. My dilemma is that Great Britain has since realized the mistake of letting me go and that her ex is pretty worthless and doesn't care about her. She's sending hints she wants to get back with me. What do I do if there are still feelings for the babes with the accent? Should I continue my path with vet school girl or rekindle that old flame? Best regards, Dave. What up, Dave? And thank you for your kind words, dude. Um... My first instinct is uh, go with this new girl, the vet, because I don't like how flip floppy this British girl is. Uh, I think, you know, maybe she's realized what she lost, but in my opinion, it seems like she's a flip flopper. So I think it's going to be an ongoing trend with her. So this new girl sounds promising. And I would, uh, you know, if you really like her, I would move forward with her. My dude, yeah, it's hard for me to say. I mean, my default would be follow your heart. If your feelings are so strong that you can't resist them, 
then you don't want something like that eating away at you while you try to live your life. But following what Chad said, I also agree that if you've made a commitment to vet school, you need to continue that and give it your best college try. And if after that doesn't work, you want to pursue some pursue something else, well, so be it, but but you got to go for it. I like how you keep telling me this this other dude's like a total deadbeat. Yeah. I'm curious about that. Cuz here's the thing, dude. Sometimes I wonder like with people like if they're calling their ex a deadbeat and then they call their other ex a deadbeat then the likelihood is at some point if you guys break up she's gonna call you a deadbeat but the real common denominator is her it's a little premature for me to be suggesting that but something to keep an eye on that's a smart call you think so thank you yeah uh hey chad and jt oh wait i have one so i i don't have it right in front of me but a stoker wrote into me on instagram and he said what's up chad and jt how do I, how do my friend and I deal with uh, us being Eskimo bros with the same girl and then two months later she's pregnant and says either of us could be the dad? What do we do? I got this message a couple of weeks ago, so. Uh, That's heavy. I, I think both of you guys just prepare to be the dad and turn it into like a fun competition where it's like, dude, I'm going to be a way better dad than you. It's like, if you're the dad, he's like, I'm for sure going to be the dad. Yeah. And you just like bone up on like father knowledge, read a bunch of books, you know, get your life set up, like your apartment set up so you can like have a crib and accommodate a child. And then whichever one of you turns out not to be the dad, you just, you know, move on, but you'll have a great skill set for the next girl you meet. Pampers? Nice, dude. I got huggies, bitch. Right, yeah. Um, I like that. That's a solid move. Um, yeah, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't freak out. Just you know, yeah, take it with a positive note, and you know, enjoy being buddies with your bro. And then, whoever wins the dad comp, good on him. And whoever loses, that's your godfather. Nice. This is positive vibes today. It's good stuff. All right. Hey, Chad and JT, love the pod. Y'all have really gotten me stoked about working out and spreading the good vibes. Thanks, that's, dude. It's wonderful. I want to know your thoughts on dating without apps. No, you should always eat appetizers when you're dating. <laughs> 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 I moved to Houston, Texas a year ago, and I'm originally from the East Coast. I've dated a few guys I met through Bumble down here, but I'm not sure if they're even really my type. They also don't seem to really dig my sort of hippie vibes i guess since i'm not from here and originally and since i'm not from here originally and work for a small company my friend base is kind of small here too do you think it's possible to find a chill dude without having to meet them through apps any ideas for meeting guys organically i'd love to hear your thoughts peace sarah sarah thank you so much for writing in i'm always stoked when we get a female question in. so any female listeners keep writing in questions it does um, feel good yeah yeah, dude, I'd say non-apps is preferable. Uh, whenever I go on a date with a girl from a, a dating app, it's usually, usually is, I don't know what there is about it, but it's not, it doesn't really work out. But, um, so, in terms of tips for how to meet dudes, um, just get out in the world, you know? Don't be afraid to approach dudes. I think we we live in a time where that's uh, more and more acceptable. Um, so, you know, go go and uh, go places where you know where that pique your interest so hopefully you'll find a dude where you guys share similar passions you know go paintballing go make pottery go you know make creme brulees basically maybe hit up strider and see what he and his gf do i don't know if that applies but um yeah uh just go out there don't be afraid to talk to dudes just get out in the world and you'll find a, a solid guy Sarah, yeah, I think you're going to have um, great luck finding someone compatible for you. You seem super chill, and, uh, you know, I think trying to do it without apps is noble. I mean, with apps, you can cast a wider net, but it can also turn dating into sort of a video game, at least from the male perspective. And I find that it's fun at first, but it's diminishing returns after a while. I would say the best thing I could tell you isn't like a specific place to go, but just a mentality to have lean in to getting out of your comfort zone. The more you get out of your comfort zone, the more you kind of like risk being in 
places where you might not meet someone, but there's a lot of people around. Because that's the thing. It's like I've gone to bars being like, I'm going to meet someone. And I just stood at the bar and didn't talk to anyone the whole night. And that hurt. I was like, man, I wish I would have been more outgoing. But over time, that built up strength and it built up um, comfort with those kind of experiences. And then at other nights, I was ready for it and I did meet people. So just be willing to not feel comfortable and and realize that that's how you're going to build strength and confidence in yourself. So just keep getting out there. Keep going to the places Chad was talking about, like paintballing or the bar or, you know, like CrossFit or something like that, because you're working out a lot. So, I mean, that's a, a good place to meet guys who are active. And um, yeah, just just anytime you're like, you know what, I just want to stay in and, and be lazy. And I mean, you know, you got to practice self-care, but but just just be like, but actually, I'm going to force myself to go out to this, uh, you know, Buffalo Wild Wings and just hold down, hold down my own little fort at this bar stool. And, and, and I promise something good is going to come your way. Yeah. And go towards the, uh, go towards the fear. I, um, always, I always go towards the fear. I, I'm learning that in my own life as well. You know, there's a lot of times where, uh, cause I, I'm a pretty, uh, I, I'm, I'm breaking out of this currently. I've been working on it, but, um, in my life I've tended to sort of keep to myself and unless I'm with my squad, you know, like I don't, I've, I've, it'd be tough for me to like approach strangers. But now if I see like someone that I want to approach or something, um, my go-to instinct is like, just turn around, walk away and go watch men in black or something. But, um, you know, these past couple of times I've, I've literally, I've turned around, like I was at beach, this, I was at the beach the other day going to surf i walked by this girl and i was like oh whoa i walked by i'm like i don't say anything so i walk by i make it like 20 feet and i'm like you know what you're gonna regret not saying anything and you're gonna get down on yourself so i turned around i said what up we had a great conversation she was in the philosophy and she's a mega babe and we connected so go towards the fear always Yo, what's up, Chad and JT? I have a serious dilemma that is killing my vibe. I have my wedding coming up within the next month, which has me super stoked. Congratulations. It will be a decent-sized wedding with a lot of my friends here. There. However, and unfortunately, I've decided not to invite some friends that I'm not particularly close with or have even communicated with in months to a year. They've recently hit me up pretty aggravated that they have yet to receive an invite. When they came back into the college town to party, though, I never hit up I am never hit up to join them. If I'm not even hit up to go out to go raid the nightlife with them, doesn't it make sense that they won't have an invite to the wedding? Should I send them an invite to make them happy and keep the bad vibes away or stick to my guns and say, sorry, bro. Sorry for the long question. And thanks for the dope pods every week. Anonymous. Dude, not that long of a question. No worries, dog. Brother, man, it's your day, dude. You cannot be stressing about some people who are going to try and make you feel bad for not including them when it's the one day where you're allowed to do exactly what you want. Yeah, I totally concur with that. Do what you want. Invite who you want. It's your party, man. If you don't feel close to them, if you don't want them there, they don't have to come. Dude, here's the thing. If I don't get invited to your wedding, guess who I'm, guess who I'm thinking about? I'm thinking about myself. I'm looking in the mirror and I'm saying, what did I do? to not get invited to this wedding. Like, how did I blow this? You know what I mean? I yeah. love going to weddings. Yeah. I've caught in the garter belt at six straight weddings. I'm going to put out a video, a highlight reel of me catching them all, so stay tuned for that, Stokers. And I get invited to every wedding. And you know why? Because I put the time in. Because when I come back into town, I, I invite everybody. You know, if these people aren't getting invited, it's on you. Don't write this guy being like, why aren't I getting invited? Look in the mirror and be like, why aren't I getting invited? Yeah. I had a friend. Nobody showed up to his birthday party one time. I was like, dude... And he was pissed off at everybody. I said, dude, if no one shows up to your birthday party, if one person doesn't show up to your birthday party, maybe you're a little upset at that person. If nobody shows up to your birthday party, that's on you. Yeah. Good call. Steven, I tore my MCL surfing six weeks ago and still can't shred. How do I get my stoke back up? Bummer, dude. There's nothing worse than being incapacitated. I mean, my groin is pulled and I still get out there because I can't, it's, it's the worst. So I totally feel for you, dude. I would, uh, and that was, this is inspired by par. Actually, I would take it upon yourself to learn new stuff, find new interests while you're being, uh, um, you know, while you're resting because you don't want to just stew and be like, Oh, I can't do anything. Just, you know, make use of the time you had, go read, um, 
sign on to one of those master classes, become an astronaut. That's something I want to do. So take the time that you have and invest it in something where you can better yourself as a dude. Yeah, dude. And also, you know, just take solace in the fact that it's an MCL, not an ACL, and that it's something you can bounce back from. You know, there's other injuries that permanently impair us, but this one is one that you can recover from. So, uh, yeah, just uh, do your best to enjoy the solitude. But like my dog Chad said, being incapacitated is no fun. But soon enough, you'll be back to one hundo, my dog. Wow. Sup, Stoke Gurus? Was in a weird situation last night. Was at the bar ripping up the dance floor with some unheard of dip moves. And later when I went to the urinal, the guy next to me was full on glancing over at my rig. I get in my birthday suit a lot when I party like JT, so I don't mind showing my stick around. But this guy made a different when it was just us two. How should I have combated this move from the stranger? Glance back, say what's up. You tell me, Henry. What do you do? Dude, all right, yeah, thank you. Um, I was at a, the 24-hour fitness in a, in a, a sexually uh, very liberated part of town one time, and a dude walked into the shower on me, and I just turned to him calmly, and I was like, what up? And then he's like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm showering. And then he was like, so what's up? And then I was like, I'm just going to keep showering. And then he was like, uh-huh. And then I was like, can you leave? And he was like, yeah. And he finally walked out of the shower. And, you know, I don't want to be egotistical, but it felt to me like he had um, sexual intentions with me. And it did make me feel a little bit violated. So the first thing I would do is say, that's how girls feel all the time. Like us dudes aren't aware of it because people don't put that sexual pressure on us a lot, but it does make you feel very vulnerable when someone makes you feel cornered uh, in a sexual way. So, you know, take this as a moment to increase your empathy and be like, oh, dude, I should be more gentle and sensitive towards ladies because it is a weird feeling when you feel like someone really wants to have sex with you and you don't really want to have sex with them. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing I would say, dude, is that, um, you know, you, you can't really do much to the dude. You just got to, I mean, you can say something, but I would just let bygones be bygones and walk away and just realize that, you know, being the way you are, there's going to be some consequences for it. If you're swinging your stick around a lot, I mean, I know in this situation you were doing everything by the societal book, but it happens. And yeah, sometimes I do feel a little bit exploited. You know, I've had friends who are like, par, get naked, get naked when I didn't want to get naked. And I was like, look, a lot about me getting naked is that it's my choice in it. And when I feel pressurized to do it, it takes the fun out of it. But once you have a rep for doing stuff like that, it's the cost of doing business. So I don't know, dog. Um, I think you did the right thing just writing into us and understand that I feel where you're coming from, but I don't really know what you could say to the homie. I think you nailed it right there. I don't, I don't have anything to add. Come on, dog. <laughs> you nailed it. Thanks, dude. No, I've, uh, you know, I've... You're, you're a hot dude. Oh, thanks. So people are obviously, they objectify you at times. Yeah. Um, yeah. There it is. <laughs> I haven't thought about that. There it is. Rise and shine your surfboard, you little stokers of you know potent splendor. My name is Cooter, and I was inquisitive if you two magnificent magpies of margatitious wisdom could add in the addendum process of a bar crawl I'm planning. It's called the Paul Crawl, and the rough clay is slamming some sans crust tuna sandwiches, hitting some bars for strictly corona chugging, and ending the night at some bar that will play F and F for us. There is a dress code, black or white tees with jeans, bonus points for a fire pair of cons. Shout out to Kirsten to Kristen Stewart. Anything I'm missing racing Hot Wheels down the sidewalk, need for speed underground comp, having my best bro fall in love with a blonde Betty and make me question what family's all about, hijack the juice can play 12 hours to see you again i don't want this crawl to be archaic and amorphous i want this maiden voyage to legend wait for it walker i know brian is quoted saying what we do best we improvise but i don't know if that pertains to an honorable action of pure reverence and tranquil commemoration i want this to be a smooth bone not a sandpaper dry run anything would help sorry if i went ham on the keys here p.s strider is possibly one of the funniest and insightful sobs i've ever had the pleasure of hearing since hal holbrook did fdr on broadway good reference dude 
Did he do FDR? I thought he was more known for uh, Mark Twain. That's interesting. I'll check it out. Seriously, jailbreak. Seriously, jailbreak him out of Benihana and make him a third spot on the part. We're, we're definitely gonna have him back on soon. Maybe yeah. next week. Yeah, he's a regular for sure. My usage of dude has exponentially increased as my stoke has over the course of your or over the course of your pod. Never stop blessing the world with your infinite sagacity. Great word, dude. I first heard Michael Mann say that on the director's commentary for Miami Vice. I've never been this cogent minded in years. P.S.S. I plan on donating to your pate soon. Oh, he, Patreon. Patreon. He abbreviated like my dog. Once I get more muns, I'm filling up your piggy bank as fast as I'm filling up my Nas tank. Also, Chad's poem to Milani was fucking fire. Cry to Helix, bomb, cry to Helix beer bongs worth of man tears. Audi 5000. Dude, do we have some like English majors dude, writing these questions? Scholarly fan. Oh, Very scholarly. Yeah, dude. I, I just want to commend you for writing in a fire question the details the, everything about it which just got my stoke tank through the roof so thank you my dog um what was the question <laughs> uh he wants to do that pub crawl about paul oh right dude you got it all figured out it's gonna be fire you got it dude. Yeah, no worries. Like, nothing to add just, i was like this sounds like an amazing party what's the question yeah exactly <laughs> just invite us and uh, if you need someone to work for you i'm available yeah so uh everything about it sounds great sounds like it's gonna be a smooth bone so you know put on that douglas lubricant and slide in dude yeah you got it all figured out dog you're solid Sup, bros. I currently find myself in a situation where a difficult decision must be made. Quick backstory. My grandpa was the man, one of the most influential people in my life. He passed away when I was 13, and my grandma still has his car. I'm 21 now, and she's looking to get rid of it because she's too old to drive. This is a mid-2000s Nissan Altima with minimal mileage, talking less than 50K. From top to bottom, this car epitomizes practicality. From killer gas mileage, outstanding legroom, safety... And, of course, a special place in my heart because my young ass self used to ride along with my gramps in it. But I already have a car, which I have named Vivian. Vivian is a 1995 Volvo with an awful paint job. The ceiling is falling. No AC. And it's simply just not a pretty ride. But me and Vivian have been through it all. Two girlfriends, two dorm rooms, an off-campus apartment, and countless road trips. Volvos are some of the safest, comfiest cars on the road, except she's really heavy and gets crappy gas mileage. Yes, I assigned my car a pronoun. I think that's fire. Chad, I know how much you love your hybrid Ford Escape, so maybe you can relate to this. Do I go for Gramps' old car, which is clearly just a better option when I use my brain, or do I stick with my girl Vivian and all 130,000 miles who's been there for it all? While both vehicles mean something to me sentimentally, I really am torn. I can't betray Vivian like this. Thanks, bros. Keep up the good work. From an uh, objective standpoint... Um, Get objective, dog. When you were describing your grandpa's car, I felt a burst of amp like i just chugged like a five hour energy i'm like that is a fire car and you should totally go with that i understand the sentimentality of vivian you know and there will always be a place for vivian in your heart and i totally respect that dude like for real um but i think it's time i mean i think you in the way you wrote it yourself you know i think you answered the question you got to go with this new car it's time to let vivian Right into the sunset. Because, again, you know, with anything, with, like, you know, it, with, like, you know, if in, like, performances or anything, if the guy stays, if the performer stays on too long, you get tired of him and you start to hate him. You don't want to start to hate Vivian. You want to cherish those memories. So uh, it's time to say goodbye. Smart, dude. I would offer one other piece of advice, dude. I think you obviously have to switch to the Ultima and – you know, it's like any relationship, you know, you climb Everest and then sometimes you break up and you got to go back to the base and climb Everest again. But once you get to the top, you're going to feel good and you'll build that intimacy with this next car, the same kind of relation that you had with Vivian. And I also think maybe rather than selling Vivian because you don't want to dishonor her legacy by giving her to someone else and you know, she's already got a lot of miles on her, so you might not catch that much money anyways. Maybe um, after you get the Ultima, you drive Vivian out to the desert and you light her on fire. <laughs> hey, Chad, sup, Par? I'm a big fan of the pod and commend you to you for the following you have grown in such a short amount of time. I'd also like to encourage future Strider appearances. He's coming, dude. We love him so much. As much as I love gleaning grit from the Harbingers of Stoke, Strider brings a relatable side of the show that resonates with borderline barns and small dong wielders such as myself. Strider is like Ringo or Joe Biden. Sure, I couldn't write... Abby Roadside B, but I'm still a nice guy and love my job at Benihana's. 
I need some advice with count courting a girl that I've been friends with for a few years now. In high school, I did some really dumb stuff to impress this girl, like stealing some street signs and making a fire mix CD. Been there, brother. We keep in touch now. Yet I often feel as though she is either interested in my dong and possibly more or just leading me on. Deciphering this dichotomy of signals is always like cracking the German enigma. Should I make a move or cut off communication to avoid being let on further? Here's some pros and cons to your decision. Pros, great music taste, tight female rig, smart like whip, eats peanut butter. Cons, hates weed. In the end, I would be just fine. In the end, I would be fine just maintaining a friendship with this chick. However, I feel as though often when I switch into friend mode with a girl, this side of my personality makes her attracted to me. Can dudes and babes with solid rigs be just friends? Do you ever feel that we continually just date different versions of the same person? What if I don't like that person? You don't have to read this part on the pod if it's a downer. Thanks for the help and weekly smoke stoke sessions. Russell, he crossed out smoke. Shout out Rincon Point. Shout out Sweaker. Free Strider 2020. So is he, this girl's interested in him? Yeah, he's not sure. And he's wondering if guys can be friends with girls. Dude, they can. It's You absolutely yeah. should have girlfriends. You know, it's good, and you get a perspective that you won't get from your dudes. But here's one thing I will say. A lot of guys I know who are friends with girls aren't being honest with themselves about what they really want from that girl. And that can be fine, too. A lot of people can manage that over a lifetime. But I was friends with some girls where I clearly was looking for more, and at some point it just got too hard for me to keep being in pain. You know what I mean? And I was like, you know what? I just really can't be your friend anymore. I like you too much. And they were like, I thought you were my friend. And I was like... I did too. I guess I'm a liar, but I was lying to myself. Like I just, I need to take some space to really think about what I want and how I can achieve that. And it's selfish, but it's also honest. So I don't know, man, if this girl doesn't want to date you and you really like her, you might have to get a little space. I'm sorry to say. Yeah, I agree with that. That's always tough. Um, it's really the, hard because you love the person. You want to be nice. Yeah. When you always feel that kind of, uh, there's like, yearning especially when they like when you can tell they like you and you're just like oh, i feel bad you know like oh yeah it cuts both ways especially yeah when you get all like chummy and stuff yeah especially too because he's right you know like when you when you switch to friend mode with a girl oftentimes that makes you more uh, attractive to them i think because you take away that kind of like bullshit like um oh like you know be attracted you know what i mean mm-hmm. like be attracted to me because i'm you know doing this when you just take that away, I think they're like, oh, this is like a dude, whatever. Yeah, it's tough, dude. Hey, bros, my fellow bronzer and I need some help. We have a complete babe for a swim coach, but she is way out of our league and she's over 18 and we are still in high school. What should we do to have a shot at this new goddess that has crossed our path? P.S. Love the pod, bros, Justin and Wyatt. P.S. Love the names, Justin and Wyatt. What, what was the question? They have a super hot swim coach and they want to hook up with her. How do they do it? They're in high school. She's not. <laughs> Butterfly stroke, dudes. Show those shoulders. Flex, flex, flex. Same, yeah. Same plan I gave uh, Chad for uh, the gym instructor. Like, just work out super hard in front of her. You know, talk to her. Find out what she's into. And then the biggest thing is, is like when she cracks a joke to make everybody laugh, make major eye contact, but don't laugh. Because, dude, teachers, I realize this, teachers, a big part of what is fun for them or instructors is the attention they get from the group and the respect they get from the group. And 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 it feels really good when everybody's, like, you know, looking up to them. So if you can look up to them, but at the same time be aware of the dynamic that they're expecting and you can subvert that, gives you a little bit of an edge. Sorry, guys, I know that's tricky. I know I'm pulling into the deceivious little quiver there, but... It's a move that I think works. Dude, I could totally see a teacher just being like, and yeah, that's when they called me Frank. And then everyone's laughing and just, <laughs> you're just like. I'm just stone faced like, oh, you felt like you needed to make that joke to win the class? That's nice. <laughs> Why don't you get back into calculus? Yeah, he's like, can we get back to the work at hand? Yeah, that's what I do. I'm like, can we get back to a uh, swim training? I'm not in the mood for jokes. Like, I'm a very serious student yeah. here to swim. <laughs> like, par, you're failing. Right. Right. All right. What's happening, Chad and JT? I just graduated college and feel under pressure because I have no jobs line, no jobs lined up. My dad is on my dick for getting a job and keeps cracking jokes that he's going to kick me out of the house, but not sure if he's serious. Do you have any advice to getting a job I like, or should I just play the free rent situation out until I absolutely need to get a job? Thanks. And you guys have the best podcast by far. Chris Bigler. Uh, I try to get a job. 
you know, look for something that you you really want to do. It's like Warren Buffett says, if you had all the money in the world, what would you do? Go for that. Now that's easier said than done, you know. But uh, you know, once you you want to get your life started, you don't want to prolong that. Uh, the other thing I would do is I'd be like super chummy with your dad, like laugh at all of his jokes and like make sure he's having a great time every time he's with you. And then he's never going to want you to leave. Like if you become just your dad's bro and like you really understand where he's coming from when he talks, then he's going to be like, wait, even though he doesn't have a job and he's kind of a dingus, I don't want to lose him because he's kind of a great hang. Good point. So just be super fun, dude. Be like so fun that your dad's like, fuck, dude, I can't lose this guy. He's bringing too much to the table. Why are you so cool, son? Yeah, you're like, dude, I want to kick you out, but you're the fucking shit, dude. You're like, thanks, dad. I'm sorry. I'm sort of a fucking waste, but what up, dude? Why don't we go do this fun thing? And your Joe. dad's like, I can't resist. I want to kick you out, but we're going go-karting. Joe, wow. Oh, and guys, um, we want to have more guests on the podcast to keep uh, to keep it fresh and to keep mixing it up. So if you guys have any uh, recommendations for who you'd like to have on the pod, obviously we're going to have Strider back on, but... Anybody else that you guys think might be a good fit for us? And, we, you know, we're really interested and, and I think adept at doing interviews. So we'd, we'd you know, go go wide ranging with it. Yeah, go um, go big. You know, we're, we're talking major celebs. Can I say one person who's agreed? Yeah. Anastasia Ashley is down. So whenever she's in SoCal, she said she'll roll through. So we're thinking that level, guys, you know. Go big. Is that it? Guys, I think that's it. All right, Jabwow, my dogs. That'll be it for episode 20 of the Going Deep with Chad and JD podcast. Thank you guys so much. Um, don't forget to leave reviews. Um, hit us up on our Patreon for bonus content. And um, yeah, dudes, stay stoked. Keep writing in. Thank you so much. What's with you?